Heat shielding has always been a challenging technical problem in protecting spacecraft during atmospheric entry. Even Elon Musk, the leader of SpaceX, has acknowledged the difficulty, stating no one has ever succeeded in creating a fully reusable heat shield. However, Sierra Space, a company developing a space plane, is making steady progress in creating a new thermal shield for their innovative spacecraft. What makes the thermal shield of this new space plane unique? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Currently, Sierra Space is making significant strides in developing the Dream Chaser space plane, a versatile and reusable vehicle designed for low Earth orbit missions. The first vehicle in the program, Tenacity, is in the final stages of testing and assembly, with its maiden flight scheduled next year. This milestone marks a critical step in demonstrating the capabilities of this next-generation space plane. Meanwhile, technicians are completing the installation of the heat shield tiles, a vital component for ensuring the spacecraft's safe re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. These tiles represent a blend of advanced materials and manufacturing techniques, providing both thermal protection and durability. Oak Ridge National Laboratory and Sierra Space Corporation have developed a new heat shield based on venerable 1980s space shuttle technology to protect the next generation of reusable spacecraft from the deadly heat of reentry. The biggest barrier to getting spacecraft back to Earth safely is our own atmosphere. Just as the shell of air around our planet protects us from cosmic rays and the meteors that constantly rain down on us, it also burns up satellites whose orbits have decayed, provided they haven't been equipped with special protection. The most common form of heat shield used today is made of phenol plastic. First developed in the 50s, these protect returning spacecraft by what's called ablative shielding. This deals with the heat caused by a craft hitting the atmosphere at ultrasonic speed by vaporizing the plastic and carrying the heat away before it causes damage. It works, but only by destroying the shield, so it can be used only once and with a very limited service life. An alternative to this was developed for NASA's space shuttle, which began flying in the 1980s. The shuttle fleet used a heat shield made of vast array of ceramic silicon carbide tiles. These worked by absorbing the heat and then very slowly releasing it. In fact, it released it so slowly that even when it was hot, you could pick up one of the tiles safely, provided you did so by the sharp edges. Unfortunately, these tiles came with some disadvantages. Over 24,000 6x6 6 inch or 15 by 15 centimeter silica fiber tiles had to be applied to the undersurface of the shuttle. Each one of these had to be made by hand using molds and heating them to 2350 degrees Celsius or 4262 degrees Fahrenheit. In practice, these tiles had a nasty tendency to come loose and fall off. They were also very fragile. Fortunately, the development of new heat shield tiles for Dream Chaser has significantly improved upon these shortcomings. First, one of the most notable upgrades is the significant reduction in the number of tiles. While Space Shuttle required over 24,000 tiles, Dream Chaser uses only about 2,000, simplifying both the design and maintenance process. This reduction not only decreases the likelihood of damage, but also streamlines installation and refurbishment between flights, making the spacecraft more efficient. The new tiles that are being installed on Sierra Space's Dream Chaser orbiter use a combination of silicon carbide and carbon fibers that provide protection, high strength, and stable flight dynamics. In addition, new manufacturing techniques make these tiles much less labor-intensive to produce. The result is a heat shield that moves on from the 1980s when NASA made five launches of the shuttle a year to the next generation that could see five launches a day. It's set to be used on the Sierra Space Dream Chaser, the first ever winged commercial space plane designed to transport crew and cargo to low Earth orbit. The key to achieving a flight cadence that's driven by fast landing to launch turnaround times is the reusability of the TPS, said ORNL Principal Investigator Greg Larson. The materials we are exploring will push the boundaries of reusability that translate directly to commercial viability for space access providers. To enhance the reliability of these new heat shield tiles, the new thermal protection system for the Dream Chaser space plane will have to undergo a series of rigorous testing phases. A key part of this testing is the use of NASA's ArcJet Plasma facility, which stimulates the intense heat and pressure that the spacecraft will experience as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. This facility creates a high-temperature environment, allowing Sierra space plane engineers to assess the heat shield's performance in conditions 
that closely mimic real-world entry scenarios. These tests help verify the thermal protection system's ability to endure extreme temperatures of up to 3,100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 1,700 Celsius, and speeds exceeding Mach 17, ensuring that the spacecraft can safely return to Earth after each mission. In addition to re-entry testing, Sierra Space is employing advanced manufacturing techniques to further refine the heat shield and reduce production costs. These innovations include leveraging modern materials and more efficient manufacturing processes that not only enhance the heat shield's durability, but also streamline its production, making it more cost-effective for frequent use. By optimizing the manufacturing process, the company aims to create a thermal protection system that's both robust and economical, essential for Dream Chaser's long-term success in the commercial space industry. Currently, the heat shield is in its developmental phase, with ongoing tests aimed at further validating its performance. Future plans include continued refinement and integration of the upgraded heat shield into the second Dream Chaser vehicle, which is currently under production. Once fully validated, this new heat shield will be used across multiple missions, ensuring Dream Chaser can meet the demands of commercial space travel with minimal refurbishment between flights. With the new thermal protection system, Reference is expected to launch with the goal of completing at least 15 missions, highlighting Sierra Space's ambition to create spacecraft capable of frequent and cost-effective operations. So, when can we expect Reverence to debut? With tenacity set for its maiden flight early next year and with lessons learned from that mission, we can predict that if all goes smoothly and testing progresses successfully, Reverence might conduct its first flight by late 2025 or early 26. Although the wait for the new heat shield to be operational on the next spacecraft may be a bit long, it's certainly worth anticipating. Moreover, even witnessing tenacity re-enter and land, evoking the iconic legacy of the space shuttle, is going to be a momentous experience. It's been over a decade since we last saw such a symbol of space exploration in action. Tenacity will be the first in a series of flexible, reusable lifting body space planes designed for cargo to low Earth orbit. It features internal thrusters with three modes for precise maneuvering when docking with the ISS and fixed wings allowing it to re-enter Earth's atmosphere and autonomously touch down on Kennedy's runway at a 1.5G descent rate, a tenacious landing compatible with commercial runways around the globe. What won't return to Earth intact is Tenacity's paired cargo module, Shooting Star. The compact 15-foot module can hold up to 7,000 pounds of cargo and an additional external storage designed to burn up upon re-entry. Essentially, it's about 8,500 pounds of trash will disintegrate thanks to Earth's atmospheric pressure-fueled incinerator. Sierra Space stated that they'll incorporate a production line to assemble Shooting Star modules with a new module needed for each mission. If all goes as planned, Dream Chaser Tenacity will join SpaceX's Dragon in conducting cargo missions to the ISS, but certainly they'll not fall behind Dragon's crewed flights. Reverence will soon be tested and put into operation. In the same work area as the Shooting Star modules, Sierra Space engineers are also working on the Large Integrated Flexible Environment, or Life Habitat. A key aspect of that project is evaluating and testing the use of soft goods to fashion expendable structures using Vectron, a weave of high-performance liquid crystal polymer fiber that's stronger than steel when inflated. In June 2023, NASA awarded a Space Act agreement to Sierra Space under the Second Collaborations for Commercial Space Capabilities Initiative. That award included the blueprinting of new commercial space station architectures, as well as in-space logistics, refueling, and servicing systems. The company keeps a three-story model on the factory floor that offers 285 cubic meters of volume wrapped around a semi-metallic core, replete with wall separators and floors on inflation. This unit is outfitted with a newly installed built-in window. So far, the company has tested two full-scale inflatable structures and six smaller modules. The inflatable habitat design is part of a roadmap to fabricate larger and larger expendable structures, said Sean Buckley, Vice President of Space Destinations and In-Space Infrastructure at Sierra Space. Our engineering development work allows us to inflate and deflate the module so you can understand how the materials work together as an entire integrated system, said Buckley. The data the team has collected influences the larger articles that we are building. That roadmap, coupled with an extensive testing campaign, said Buckley, can lead to a life habitat offering 5,000 cubic meters of volume by expanding to over 70 feet in length and 62 feet in diameter. 
As it develops inflatable modules, Sierra Space also needs to determine how they fare upon impact with micrometeoroids and orbital debris. The company is currently testing the resilience of its habitat materials at NASA's White Sands Test Facility in New Mexico. There, the company bombards stacked material layers with gas guns that hurl projectiles at hypervelocity speeds, said Elizabeth Licavoli, a senior systems engineer. She runs the soft goods certification and testing activity at Sierra Space. The material layers being evaluated and designed are to protect the habitat's restraint layer and air barrier, Licavoli explained. It gives us the confidence that these materials would be good in orbit and also provides the benefit of radiation protection, she said. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.